All right, guys, welcome back. Beautiful Saturday here at the Latrobe Valley Club. Aircraft everywhere. We'll um, have a look around and I'll see what I can show you. So I've just found an old wing, or two wings by the look of it. Well, they may not be old. Citabria decathlon wings. Good chance just to look at all the covering and all the, how the holes are done and the tapes. So I'll just have a look over that while I'm here. Yeah, hi, I'm James, uh, James Fairrod. Uh, flew across from uh, West Sale. So one thing nice about La Trobe, they've got this sausage, uh, sausage sizzle on every Saturday, so that's always good fun. And uh, La Trobe's fun, there's always something going on, pretty busy airfield, but uh, flew across in my Skyfox Gazelle. Um, great little aircraft, similar to the Kit Fox. They were actually built, in fact, in Australia. Um, so yeah, Australian built, and uh, it's a conventional. Yeah, what, what, just, oh, what engine? Sorry, what engine? oh, the engine is a um, it's a Rotax, 80 horsepower, the good old 80 horse Rotax, fantastic little motor actually, very very reliable. Um, I mean, they've opened them up at like 5,000 hours, and you can still see the cross hatchings on the bores. So it's a great little engine. It's pretty unstressed, I think. So they they good engines. Um, yeah, and. Uh, we bought it, she's looking a bit sorry for herself, but we gave it a big going over, did the Rotax 5-year rubber, and I think she's cleaned up quite nicely. Cruise speed? Oh, oh cruise speed is like 75 knots. Yep. So she's not a cross-country aircraft, but great for sort of weekend flying. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's, um, what else? It's, it's uh, pretty easy to maintain, as you can see, pretty uncomplicated airframe. Um, easy to look after really as well and it just flies nicely uh, you know the these Junkers type ailerons really good response at low speed uh, a lot of the Zeniths use them as well I think yeah Zenith is the yeah. same yeah and um, they're really very good at low speed handling actually uh, that's where they really come in because they're a bit draggy otherwise but for low speed flying stall type stuff I reckon they're brilliant and um, yeah it's just a Conventional aircraft, you know, center stick, tow brakes, just like any other aeroplane, so I kind of like it from that point of view, and um, it's just an easy to fly, sort of viceless little aircraft, really. They, uh, it's a real pity they stopped making them, I think. Um, yeah, it's cool. Uh, All right, John. Nice little machine. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Saturdays at La Trobe. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. So, part of building, I guess. I'm in a bit of a rut, to be honest. I um, yeah, the, I finished the the build manual, if you like. The aeroplane's basically taken shape. Now I've got to do all those little jobs just to you know, get things working. Um, it gets frustrating. At the moment, I've sort of got a rough idea. I'll do the wing, I've got to do the wing panels. I've made up some little, I'll show you these in a minute, some little cheetah panels, if you like, for the covering, where the cables come out of the, the wings, around the struts, those sort of things. I've completed those. I've got the cables set up. How about I just show you? So yeah, I've got the cables, um, well, represented with string at the moment for the rudder and the tail wheel. So there's no guidance on this and it gets very time consuming and very, I don't know, emotional coming up with stuff of how it's gonna work. So my, my little blocks up here, they're gonna work well. I've got a bolt just randomly to hold that triangle floor piece. If you remember back, I did a triangle floor piece for the extension. So you, you might as well utilize that bolt hole and it actually positions the cables nice and parallel. So from that fair lead, we'll call it, up to the, up to the pedals, we're looking good and it drops the cables down nice. Now down the back, I've got to go and look at some other aircraft, I think, 
Um, rudder cables, not too bad. They'll just go direct, being a primary flight control. Um, it comes very close here. I think I'll do the same as I did on the ailerons, just over here, with a bit of tubing, and wrap it around. <clears throat> because this is not, this is on the inner frame, so I don't have to worry about the covering going over the outside, as I did on the elevator ones. These ones took me forever to knock all these up. So I think a bit of tubing, zip tied, and then wraps, then wrapped onto there will, will suffice. Um, so the rudder cables aren't too bad. Now the tail wheel, I'm not too sure. You sort of have it slack from what I understand. I've got some springs and some chains there. The chain being the, the, the length adjuster, if you like. If it's too slack, you take a link out or you can add a link on. Um, so that's not a bad idea, but you just sort of need to leave it slack. So in doing that, if I leave it slack, I don't want the cable, yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, about six or seven um, cross members in the fuselage where the cable can just lay and rub and hit the fabric on the outside potentially if it's basically, basically slack, no tension. And I've got this, you know, I've got to exit here. Do I, I don't know if I over engineer it and build some pulleys. Maybe I need some pulleys raised up a bit. Um, just in there, thinking out loud now. I've got some spare pulleys over there. But the tail, from my understanding, the tail wheel is gonna cop an absolute flogging, like these cables. Um, so maybe just a couple of pulleys up high enough to allow the cable to droop without touching the floor. I had another idea of just running some electrical conduit, like a golden rod or a Sullivan rod in a model aeroplane, uh, let the cable run inside that um, you know, and just attach it to the bottom. So I think I'll go and look at some other aeroplanes. I've also got to um, probably bite the bullet, pull this off today, and uh, we'll cut that to shape. Then I'll put it back on dry just to make sure it fits, the turtle deck that is. Then I'll jump in and do the seat belt as well. That's where we're at at the moment. Um, just yeah makes makes stuff work i guess so i've got a panel you can see that's on the underside just click out at this stage it allows the cable when i move the aileron and i'll take one on the top it's just too high for me at the moment to do that accurately but the cable runs full and free through there because once i pull it apart the cable won't exist basically. And then I've made up these, well I'm about to make up these panels, which will, you get the idea, sit on there, fabric will get glued to it and tells me where to cut the holes. Template, then we'll knock out two of those. They're basically a mirror image of each other. I've ran at the edge. I was going to fold it down, but you actually end up with two extra corners then, and that'll have a, a tape on it, no doubt, across that bridge when we get to it. But I'll cut these out, and they can get riveted on for good now. All right, just halfway through riveting that on. It's just a plate to hold the covering, basically, and then I can cut some holes in it. Um, I might have to flex it up so it actually does touch the covering. But anyway, that'll uh, work well. All right, an hour's work. Nice panel on there, I scuffed it up just because it's gonna to have to be scuffed anyway, so it was easy to do while it was off. Uh, when I say scuffed it, put the swirls on. Cheeky little bit of aluminium tape here just to put the, the slit back together. And my covering will glue to that nicely. Done both sides. A lot of duplication on a biplane. Um, looking good. Bit of oil canning going on there, but that's all right. Uh, I may have to get a, you know, bent bit of built bit of wire in there to pull this up while it's covered. Covering, I keep going on about the covering. I'm getting a bit anxious about covering, but that'll be the fun part. Just take it slow. 
right, what's next? All right, after talking to a fellow builder at the airport here, a um, bit of a change of plan. We'll run the rudder cable as per previous through that. I've taken one of the tubes out. I'm going to run a full length tube all the way down for the tail wheel cable. So they're actually hanging up. I've got them in the sun because they're a bit pigtailed. Hanging on the door there in the sun. Hopefully the sun will straighten them out a bit. Um, it doesn't matter too much. And then I will run those. But I'll start with the rudder cables. Let's get those working properly. All right, so the, down at the rudder. The rudder horns, got my turnbuckles set up. The usual three threads out. I'm just putting a notch in the bell crank here, in the control horn, just so I get, I want full movement, or as good as I can, on the turnbuckle. So at full deflection, max deflection, the turnbuckle needs to freely still face the way it needs to, like to the rudder pedals, which it does now. And same on the other side. You can see I've sort of notched the front. I'll clean it up later. Function first, make it pretty later. And then this one at full deflection. Now still, just so I've got no binding. Do that now, because I know it's bitten me once or twice before. Now we're good to go. Right, got the rudder cables sort of run. I've got to terminate the other end. We've drawn a bit of blood. Um, now, I'm going to run the brake line or Teflon tube all the way for the for the basically slack tail wheel cables and then to exit the fuselage I've cut this piece out which is about I don't know 12 mil three quarter inch ply don't worry I'm gonna make it lighter that'll go in there I'm gonna drill a quarter inch hole lay the drill over to make a nice exit and then I'll make some lightning holes in this. And then I'll put a top bit of ply to glue on the edges. And then that'll just sort of, you know, glue onto there. Um, and that'll be the exits for the, for the change of direction. I'll get this spaghetti to go in. Um, I did one, I've already done one actually and mucked it up. So you've got the hole going right through that. Just a bit too close to the edge, so we'll move that. All right, I got this piece. Now we'll cut some lightning holes in it. That was glued together. Drop that in there, and the tubes will run through there. All right, guys. Uh, back to building the camel. The Aussie Cruiser. She's back home. Nothing to do to it. Clean the windscreen, clean the bugs off. Um, she looked after me really well. Big, big adventure. Now, if you didn't see the last video, we flew up past Mildura um, to Ozfly. We're back on the camel. So, I need to work out my rudder. I'll get to that in a minute. I'll show you what I've done. All right, where we left off. So I've painted this bit. Um, of plywood so it's something like 12 mil ply with a I don't know, quarter inch piece on top plonked in there um, with yeah the black uh, poly, let's call it polyurethane um, which gives me these little holes a la a model aeroplane the brake line tubing I'm using we'll just poke through that and aim for the tail wheel now I'm not going to stress over the tail wheel right now I got some good photos from an air show I recently went to of tail wheel setups. Um, if I set it up, it means I can't retract the cable all the way into the fuselage. Once again, I'm thinking about covering. So if I have the outer glued here and flush on the bottom, um, I can just, I'm gonna have a hatch here, whether it's just a round one, whatever, there'll be a hatch on the side. Um, I can pull the cable in, cover the bottom, which will just be a flat triangle, rather than have a, a shackle and tail wheel springs that I have to get the covering on and around. Um, so it'll just be flat, stick my hand in, push a screwdriver or something through the hole, tell me where to cut the covering, 
keep it simple for myself. So for now, the cables will just hang loose, hang loose, loosey goosey, and we'll rig up the tail wheel at some stage in the future, like when it's final assembly, let's call it. Now the rudder, <clears throat> problem I've got with the rudder, just before I left, I noticed, I sort of hooked it up and then I went and did something else. Um, when I, I thought that I'd have trouble, I thought this would hit the elevator, well it does at the moment, okay, because I've slackened the cables right off, but the cables are actually, they're actually too slack, and you can see there what's stopping it, so what is stopping that, this being the pull, the pull cable, this cable should be along for the ride, but this side's going tight. Um, if I tension the cables up and give it full, if I was to disconnect this one, like the trailing cable, if you like, the pushing one, and give it a deflection, this ends up about an inch too short. So what's stopping my rudder deflection is the cables. So, potentially, I wanted, I've got those two holes and the, the imaginary center being the pin in the hinge all lined up. I, I made sure I did that and it's, you know, square from the top. Wow, bang my head on the cruiser. Around at the rudder pedals, I think this may be the issue, is uh, the blue tap tape tells me I've got to split pin the, these little joggly things and cut the tails off. Um, here's your pivot, but we're actually in front of the pivot. So I think, you know, in an ideal world, the pivot hole would be here. So it's about an inch um, trailing, if you like, or it's those guys. But they're, they're not adjusting the length of the cable, if that makes sense, they're just sort of pulling it down and keeping it parallel. Am I worried about nothing? I'm not sure. So move the rudder pedal, rudder moves. But that's what I'm gonna play with now. So I've just taken the horn off and now I'm just playing with plywood. See, that gives me three options there. I'm going with the offset first, and then I'll make another one and probably just go wider come out to seven inches or something and see what happens. I'm getting the feeling it. Yeah, I'm on the wrong track here. I think I just need to go wider. But anyway, plywood's template's simple to make. I tried that first hole. So there's the original. And I've gone, I think they're half inch increments. Um, this one's way too much. I may have to make new cables. I can live with that. So I'll snip this one off and try this one. All right, do you think I can work this out? I made, uh, I've gone outwards and I've gone fore and back, fore and aft. I think I've, I think I'm getting close, you know, two and a half inch horn. We'll try that, I'll rig it up up the front. Um, I'm just not sure what's going on. Just a quick shout out too while I'm doing this. Um, John up in Wen Wentworth, lovely to meet you mate. They recognised me from YouTube, said g'day, him and his wife, so hope you're enjoying this video, John. Um, pass on the, my thanks to the Wen uh, Sunraiser Sport Aircraft Club. Fantastic facilities up there, so enjoy the video, mate. You probably know what I'm doing wrong here, but I can't work it out. All right, so, where do I get to? Because this pivot point is behind this one, you get more pull than push value, only slightly, but it's enough to upset my rudder. So what I did, just cause I'm pedantic, I guess, I made a new horn. New horn, I moved the holes back the same distance that the offset is up there, so you get more uh, 
the same as up the front. More pull than push. And now I got full and free um, rudder. So that was worth the effort. Move on. Now we're going to do some fair leads. I've made up these guys. Now they're going to bolt on here like this. Just the consideration is the, the fabric on the side. I always keep worrying about that. I don't want to, I don't want to see a bigger Dell clamp with the rubber poking out through the covering. These you'll hardly notice by the time I cover them up and put a, um, a reinforcing tape over the top. So these guys are simply going to slip on somewhere like that. It gives me some adjustment up and down um, and just locate the rudder cables which will aid in sort of at full deflection you can see the cable hits here on this cross member. So I just want to hold it across so at full deflection it misses. And then that'll dictate where it punches through the uh, covering. We'll get those done now. Okay, I pulled the rudder bolt, rudder bar off, flipped it over. I've um, completed the split pins underneath. There's four of them under here. Why are they split pinned? Well, my understanding is any bolt that's designed to spin is castellated nut. So, just done my cables for the tail wheel. Now I was going to run the straws, well, before we get to that, this black stuff, I just use the, um, I call it bi seal. It's like electrical tape. It does a nice job. I've used that everywhere, even on the big guys. Um, well that's starting to split there already. I don't know how it'll go with the UV, but it just makes, because you're allowed up to 10 mil protruding. Some people just have a huge tag, but the book says 10, no more than 10 mil. Zip it off with the angle grind. I stuff a bit of aluminium in between the two so you don't cut the good one. Zip it off with the angle grinder. Um, I used to muck around with pliers and all that, but just, if you're gonna do this, angle grinder's the go, cut it off. And then I'll wrap it up in this. And that'll be the front all, all done. Once I pull it tight, might make a bit a bit more sense. Now I had, yeah, the two straws. Or let's get technical. One eighth, oh, sorry, quarter inch OD Teflon tube, i.e. brake line for the award-winning Aussie Cruiser. Um, I will... I've cut those too short to do the full length from my block. I don't know how, pretty simple one measurement, but I cut it wrong. Measure twice, cut once. Um, so I might just go to the shop and buy some more or I'll thread it on and see what I've got. Maybe I can miss the first, the first one. I don't know. Um, and my block seems to be working well. As I've discussed, that's it for the tail wheel for now. I'm gonna muck around and rig that and make springs and chains and whirly gigs at some, you know, once post paint, we'll call that. Yeah. Here I was worried about the rudder, you know, being full and free. Then it's gonna be like on the ground, you're gonna to have to move the whole aircraft because of the tail wheel. So, yeah, that's where that's at. All right, I'm calling that done. Rudder, um, tail wheel, rudder, needs split pins and all that. Uh, it's gonna come off anyway, won't be forgotten. I've run some tube through there to give you the idea or give me the idea of how it's gonna, how it's gonna work. I may need to lay those holes down a bit more, I think. Um, well, we'll see, see what I feel. Now, I'm not sure, obviously this isn't tightened up, but if it was, it's only gonna sit like an inch above. And I don't like, I don't like cables slapping on metal. Um, so I think I'll encase this tail wheel cable in 
a full tube, full length tube. I'll go and buy some if I can find some. Um, bit of a poet and didn't know it. Run the tubes up to those blocks there, the fair leads, and we should be good to go. I don't know if I showed it before, but I put a bit of, just me being me, a bit of uh, string. What is it, that wax string the avionics use? Just to keep my elevator bell crank prime pride in place because the rudder cables are not quite tensioned up yet, need another turn or two. But see over there, it just stops anything fouling. Just a simple bit of string to a G cord um, and finished off with some electrical tape. I tied the knots, but I'm not a, I'm not a rigger. Um, let's move on. Let's do the turtle deck. I think I need to, I need to pull that off. I need to trim that. I need to drill the holes for the seat belt. So it simultaneously we'll do the seat belt. Once the seat belt's in and positioned, it's about time to hop in and do that to position the seat belt. Drill the holes out for the seat belt. It may stay in the aircraft. Same time I will prep this for gluing it on. Get that glued on. Then the sides can go back on because they actually overlap the uh, the turtle deck just in this just in this corner, just enough to be an embuggerance for th this part of the build. Then with the side panels on, I can make my wing fairings. That's the plan. Probably won't go that way, but we'll see where we end up. All right. So just rough cutting. Well, not rough cutting. Final cut, I guess, on this turtle deck. We'll get that sorted out today. I've traced the inside of the formers etc um, I think I will take the time and make the the round bits at the back just because it's a camel and it looks nice it's almost Easter so it'd be nice to get this on and get it glued so I can sit so school holidays means I take a break um, but yeah just trimming that up slow as slow as we go the pegs the pegs work a treat which puts it back in the same spot each time you can see it's got a little bit of shape but um, Needs a fair bit of persuasion still. May even wet it today, put it on, because I've got to muck around with a seat belt. And we'll do the final gluing tomorrow if I get these scallops cut out. That's where we are at the moment. It's got the jigsaw. Now, if that doesn't scream sop with camel, nothing does. Slow and steady. Cuts it a bit too easy, actually. So nice and slow and steady. Be lim limited amount of sanding. And... Uh, couple more to go I sort of I've got my peg way back here but I think I'll cut these off up here somewhere but I'll leave this one long because it's got my hole for the peg be a sacrificial one um, that's going to look rather nice don't be lazy do another peg so move the peg up here um, and we can zip this off now and we're back where we started from All right, I bit the bullet, glued on the turtle deck. I've um, got my seat belt sort of in there and we'll worry about rigging that up later But because the bolt was in behind here. I've got that permanently mounted. It can be removed if need be. Be pretty hard once it's covered. Now I'm just going to, I just want to put a finger fillet up there. So what I'm going to do is just fill a bag full of glue so that I can squeeze it up it's a bit hard to glue upside down i just want to run a, run a fillet along each longer on i've got good good coverage there a bit of glue popping out um, but a nice finger fillet will finish that off nicely and make sure it's not going to pop off in a couple of days when i take the straps off so just like icing a cake i'm going to tip some glue into the bag snip the corner off and then i can squeeze the glue up All right, spare the clamps, spoil the job. We're all clamped on. We're down nice and tight. I've got plenty of, um, plenty of coverage. I did up underneath with the um, like icing sugar bag or whatever you want to call it, like doing a cake. Worked out well, it's not pretty, but I, I just like a nice finger fillet like I've done back here. Um, I believe there's not much strength in the glue. It's more in the joint itself, but anyway. Uh, in this case, bear in mind that's 
uh, structure, like a wall stud, that's going to be buried under the covering. It's not the finished product. We're going to cover straight over that, down this edge, which will be a 90. I've got about an eighth of an inch lip there, I'd reckon, quarter inch over the edge. Um, nice flat sanding block, sand that off. Also, now it now gives me a, um, when I run the aluminium sheet up to form the co cockpit combing, I can screw through. Um, I'll try and miss the longerons and just thinking now I'll need to put some some blocks <coughs> or anchor nuts or work something out, anchor nuts into wood, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'll self tapper an anchor nut on a metal plate to the back of the wood might be the go. We'll work that out, just thinking out loud. Um, I didn't feather the back of these just yet. So if this is two mil ply, so I've got a two mil step, um, I think I'm just gonna do a bit of filler and sand it down nicely, sort of fair it all in. Um, I didn't wanna work with feather edges up here. <clears throat> really get it strong first, get it, and once again, form over fit, function over fit. Get it functioning first, then we'll make it look pretty. Um, that's where that's at. Happy with that, been wanting to put that on for a while. We'll give that a couple of days or a day at least to dry. Um, basically I'll pull it off when I think it's had enough. If it does pop out a little bit, I could whack some self tappers in, more glue and self tapper or do whatever I have to do, even some nails, um, although things would go rusty, I guess. <clears throat> but there's no reason why that shouldn't sit and stay where it is. Areas like this might fluff out a bit, but you know, final sand. And then the plan is on these arches here, I'll just taper to the, um, the, the longeron. So it just goes to nothing. Not that it matters. I don't know why. Well, it looks, looks nice, nicer. Um, if I had done it straight, I could have just run a straight tape. Now I'm not too sure, maybe I'll just put a I don't know, four inch tape across the whole shebang. Um, we'll see, across that bridge as well. A lot of bridges to cross. So, what's next? It's time now to hop in. I've got to get in at some stage. I'll wait till all these clamps are out of the way. And once again, this is a sacrificial, let's call that F1 if you like, Formal One, um, for where the seat belt's gonna actually come out. So I'll make it, make it fit for myself, put a slot, maybe one slot or two, I'm not sure yet. Um, I think these are at max length. I know they're not, I've got about four inches there. So they should, it looks like it's gonna fit, touches the seat now. I'm gonna make a cushion up, um, cause that'll change my height a bit, I guess. And cut the slot, run the seat belts, run the seat belts down here. Then I'll go back to, then I can put the side panels on, that's right. Side panels can go back on, just so that I can make the fairing there. Then I'll get the guys down, inspect the aeroplane, see how you go. I've got um, some black tubing here that I'll run the um, tail wheel cables through. See how that works out as well. All right, so I've just run the, the black tube with the cable inside it, I used wax, just wax string. My preference was a three turn granny knot or three granny knots. And then I just put a drop of super glue on the knots. I'll let that dry, then I'll trim them off. Trim them off. Um, yeah, trim all those. Tail wheel's right to go. Might knock off for the week, I think. All right guys, thanks for watching that one. Bit of a crazy week this week. Um, not a great deal of building, to be honest. Sort of working out where I was up to. Um, give you a quick look around the aeroplane. Then the workshop. This is my setup if you haven't seen it. Got the kitchen, the TV over there. 
A couple of model aeroplanes hanging up. So why these model planes? <clears throat> the little uh, orange cheapskate up there, it's actually a copy of one of the first, um, first model planes I ever built, would have been about 1981 I reckon, 1981. Um, my brother and I climbed up a hill. Um, well, initially I had a, little, had a little OS 10 in the front, my dad flew it, two channel Futaba attack radio. My dad flew it, who used to be an RC modeler. Scared the hell out of him. Um, I put a nose block on it. My brother went up one, up the top of the hill. I was down the bottom. He threw it off. Beautiful. But I forgot to switch it on. So that was the end of that one. So I built a copy. Um, one of the first, that was a magazine, four, you know, a four page magazine pull out plan. The other one up here, Super Socroli, uh, 1974, my dad built one of those. I had some photos. Um, OS 60 FSR, still there. I flew that up at um, uh, the state field at Derham at Guam, whatever you call it. Flies pretty fast, but I copied Dad's colour scheme, so it's a bit sentimental, that aeroplane up there. And the Haraka is a third scale Haraka, they call it, which means magpie in uh, <clears throat> uh, Finland or Germany or something, in Europe, let's say Europe. And it's just nice to hang it up in the in the uh, hangar. That's the RAF in me coming out, I guess. Have all my tools there. And back to the camera. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.